Hi guys, and in this tutorial we're going to make ourselves an advanced virtual home server out of our Intel Nook. Um, a virtual server it allows you to host mobile operating systems on the same physical hardware at the same time. So, first of all, you're going to need a bootable operating system. So you're going to need a bootable USB stick with Zen Server on it. Um, I will link the tutorial in the video or in the description takes two minutes and then you'll be ready to go so once you've got that and you've plugged it in you should see this screen this is the Citrix Zen server boot screen and whilst it boots it'll give you a small amount of information on Zen server um, Zen server works kind of like a headless version of VirtualBox um, and using the client Zen Center, you can control everything that's on your Zen server. So now the booting's getting uh, underway, it will come to a load of option, install options in a minute. But um, it's pretty quick on the Intel Nook. Um, I don't think it's going to take as long as uh, this video uh, is actually the duration of this video. So we'll get into a few other things whilst we wait for it to load. So, like I was saying, Zen server is very easy to use it, you don't need um no vnc uh you can access straight away right now we have our options i'm in the uk so we're gonna select uk when it lets me Right, so we've selected UK now. And yep. Yeah. And it's uh, it's pretty quick, you just read the text and pretty much hit OK every time. It will not ask you pretty uh, anything too difficult. Most of it's um IP addresses and things like that. Uh yes. And we've got to the install already. So I'm just installing the basic package. Um, later on you can add the rest of it. I personally haven't had a need to add the extended version. Um, this is important. You need to put in a root password. Now... I forgot that it's a minimum of six characters, and as I was doing this for a YouTube video, I thought I'd chuck in something very simple to remember. But um, we had to change that, so I stuck in something more complicated. It is important, though, that you put thing, this in um, as a complex password, because this will give you control to everything on your Zen server uh, remotely. So we're going to leave all this to be called off the router. And we are in Europe because there's no UK on this list. And hopefully they've got London. Yep, they got London. Uh, yep. Yep. And install. Uh, it's a very simple installer. It doesn't really take very long. Um... So what kind of things will we be using uh, Zen for after the Zen server after we've installed it? Um, I personally may run a Minecraft server on it. Um, I don't play Minecraft, but uh, a friend of mine has suggested that I give it a go. Um, so being that uh, you can switch virtual boxes in and out and stop and start them at will, I might install it on one and give it a test run and see exactly how how uh whether i like it or not but more importantly uh you could use this uh virtual home server for things like uh web servers mail servers you know uh cloud storage just general uh multi-purpose use um, I've seen them used in the past for labs, so for testing software and testing malware. 
um, as well as things that are like uh, video rendering, um, game servers, um, pretty much anything you can do in a virtual box, uh, you can do on Zen Server, and it doesn't tax your local machine because it's running remotely. So if you have something and you say don't want it lag in your computer, and it's a you know just a general task, you can set a virtual box up for it chuck it in the virtual box and leave it running continue what you're doing on your machine also gives you the option that uh, if say you no longer want to run this um, server or this operating system because you can it does come with a an interface um, so you can see the screen you don't need to install any extra software to see the screen on your remote virtual box so um, you could always use it as you know, uh, an extra desktop, things along them lines. I personally will probably end up using this just for personal use. So I'm thinking about sticking a my cloud on there or own cloud. Um, maybe a Git repository. Uh, other things along them lines. Maybe a few test beds, test platforms. Or you, you could just use it to, check, to test uh, operating systems that you haven't used before. Um, once you stop and start the machines, it's they, they, when you stop them, they don't use any resources up. And when you want it, you can just start it back up again. So this is taking some while to uh, actually copy the files over. So I will cut the video out now and I will come back in a minute. Right, so we're back now and the install is getting right towards the end. It did take a little longer than I expected. Um, I'm sure it didn't take this long on my other Intel Nooks, but they are all the same model, so it should take in theory the same amount of time. Right, so the install bar has just finished and it's now prompting us to remove the media device. So just unplug your USB stick. Um, I'm going to unplug the screen. The capture card will keep recording for a few, probably for about 30 seconds after I've unplugged the screen. Um, so you'll see the start of the boot of uh, Zen server you don't need the screen attached in fact all I have attached normally is the uh, Ethernet and the power lead and that's it So we're now jumping back into the reboot and That is all that's needs to be done on the server side so uh, We will jump straight into the straight into the Windows bit. You will need to go to your Windows laptop or you know uh, your, your laptop or your desktop, whatever you're using. Uh, the link to the Zen Center is in the description. And now we're on my machine. Uh, now we're on my personal machine. You can see I already have Zen, Server in, uh, Zen Center installed. I already have machines active. So we're just going to use the IP address um, that we know that the Zen server is sitting on, the new Zen server in my case, and the root password that we just set the server to. Um, I'm using a very long one. Um, and we're going to wait for it to connect. And it has connected, and there is our new Zen server, ready to take virtual boxes. Um, in another video, I will show you how to export them, export virtual machines from... From a uh, virtual box to your Zen server. I'm just quickly renaming the the Zen server to something I want because uh, localhost just doesn't cut it for me. Uh, I have more than one running and it would just get confusing. Um, so yes, in the next tutorial we will probably show you how to export a uh, pre-built virtual client that's in virtual box pack it up and export it ready for the use in Zen. So as you can see I'm messing around with the uh, 
with the create a new virtual box you can do that straight from here uh, but until next time thanks for watching and if you enjoyed it please hit the like button